You know, I can't stress this enough. And I know after a while it comes off as a cliche of repetitiveness or probably boring or whatnot, but we have to keep this in mind. And I never do things or say things to offend or defend anyone, but we are programmed by society, social media, er, er, we're programmed by everything, but we aren't taking accountability to educate ourselves, relearn, unlearn certain things, and then we get mad at the next person for picking and choosing. You know, I do my due diligence, but I also pick and choose. But for me, I always like to try to have, you know, more information because, again, we can't mind our business. But when we do mind our business, you know, it it becomes an issue. And this is how we get into some shit. What's up, blessed ones? You are now blaring the podcast. Brought to you by AB1 Studios. Thank you for your time. Listen in. You want to know something else, plus ones? point something out because there's this video of Neil Long that's resurfacing from I guess from a couple of years ago where she was talking about how she used to date this 30 year old man when she was in you know high school or whatnot and I seen so many comments you know coming at you know the guy coming at the mom and Again, right is right, wrong is wrong, sure. And people talk about how it was the, you know, it's the norm. You know, it was the norm back then. Because again, what was this like? What, probably like the 80s. Or oh, now, you know, people know Neil Long. You know, beautiful woman. Like, you'll be, you know, it's a lot of, even still is a lot of men's dream woman. Like, we all crushed on her. You know, Holly Berry, Jada Picky, um... You know, Robin Givens, like, we all crushed on these women, but it was like people didn't acknowledge what she had said. And again, it was a small clip that I looked at, but it was, you know, she said, you know, he was from Amman or wherever that is. I think that's somewhere, you know, somewhere in Asia or something. But one thing that I, you know, want to say is that, of course, being a full grown man being interested in a young woman teenager whether you're 16 17 18 19 you know we all have our limits and preferences you know one thing i will say again you know about picking and choosing you know a lot of people did it you know, I know people in high school and my and my upcoming and I, I graduated in 05 and I know that there was some women in my school that was dating older guys. I don't know if they was in their 30s, but, you know, they was still, you know, old dirt. And I want to know, like, what the what the. What the guidelines are, because, again, we can we can say that the age of consent is 16. We can say the age of consent is 17. We can say that as long as the parents are okay with it, then it shouldn't be an issue because people talk about how 
what would a grown adult have in common with a child? And we have to start not being politically correct, but we have to understand that different cultures go by different things. So we don't really know what the culture is. Like we looking outside looking in and we say this is wrong. Now to me, I'm not doing it. I'm 35. Like for me, I have a limit even in, in that. Like I say, I think if you're, you know, nine years younger than me, I might have to fall back. I don't care how old you are. Because to me, it's like there's that generation. Like, I work with people that's 20 years old. I work with people that's 10, 15 years younger than me. Like, I work in retails. And then I look at the the cultural differences and the age differences and all the generational differences. And, it's, again, that's work. But when it comes to romantic relationships, even platonic relationships, you know, you have to be, you know, available to help out the youth and you have to also be set boundaries to remove yourself from that. Like I'm a parent. Okay. I have children, nieces and nephews. I have coworkers. I have, you know, younger children that I'm around and some of them can look at me like uncle. Some of them can look at me like big brother. Some of them can look at me like, you know, dad or whatnot, but, you know, not to validate this, because I want to be clear that that is definitely morally wrong for me, but I'm going to tell you why. It's because you might, again, you, like, if you're old enough To where you can still make adult decisions and you're dealing with someone who cannot, you know, there, there, the compatibility level is just kind of just like, just out of this. It's just, I can't even use the word, but it's just kind of, it's wild. So I don't sit here in judge or fault anyone because again we got to look at it when i was an adult well when i was young like i said you know i'm i'm 35 you know lean long you know the holly bear you know they're in the fitness and stuff and you know of course i'm i'm a young man and i have you know desires and crushes and stuff like that but i also crush it on women my age but it's also one of those things where it's like we got to look at what what is it about a woman that men is attracted to? You know, you can see a good looking woman who is 20 years older than you, 10 years older than you, and be like, you know, she's beautiful. You know, you watch these movies that you're probably not even supposed to watch, right? It's rated R, rated PG 13, whatever. And like going back again to the programming, like we are programmed by society, and now in the 20, the 21st century, um, we have social media. And then, so with, in my, and for my generation, you know, we have the social media, we have society, we have the, the homes, the Christ, Christian, um, culture still, you know, making their judgments. And for me, I always think about, okay, if our mind isn't even fully developed until the age of 25, should we even think about dating? Because as a, as a, as a man, as a father, I'm not going to sit here and teach my son how to, you know, be a husband or be a boyfriend. And he's six. I mean, there's certain things that they, that they're going to see. Like how I treat his mom, my ex-wife, is everything. So I do have to treat her with respect 
So, because the fact that he doesn't even live with me, even, and this is why, again, I said this last um, episode, this is why it's important to have that foundation of when you are living separately from your children, especially when they're at a young age, they're going to develop and see certain things. And, of course, I do my best to make sure that he respects his mom and that he, hey, you don't, this is not what you're supposed to do. I don't really want to think about it, but I know because it's just one of those things that, you know, you just can't escape. And we haven't really gotten to that point of where, how do we eliminate this? Because again, we can control what they watch. You know, we got the tablets, got the phones now, and they're going to see certain things. Like, again, I'm not going to sit here and put him in isolation because I want to look at certain things on television. I'll put certain things on, on, you know, his radar to stay a child as, as young, as much as possible. But I know because it is a human desire, it's a human nature to be attracted to the opposite sex, man and woman, a man should be attracted to a woman and a woman be attracted to a man. So, like, when you're a child and you're developing these feelings, you, you, because people don't know this. Like, I have to tell this to my brother a lot of times. Like, my son, you know, he, he's a, he was a baby. You know, he was, you know, he was, he would have hard ons, but it wasn't even a sexual thing. So people don't know that babies, uh, that, that, um, boys, they have, they have erections, but it's not always, from arousement. So it's a natural thing. Now, when he starts experiencing, you know, attraction, sexual attraction from the opposite sex, that conversation is going to come up. But even now, it's like, you know, he's a kid like, yeah, this is my girlfriend. Oh, you might, he might think, oh, that this little girl is cute. Right. So my point, my point is this though. Like we have to recognize what is normal what is natural and then what is neutral as far as that attraction because at the same time programming conditioning and again i'm not a scientist i'm not a doctor i'm not this guru or anything like i lead with love all the time but i'm gonna tell you like when i was in high school there was freshmen there were sophomores, juniors, seniors. And then some freshmen, they was more developed than the seniors. I'm just going to keep it 100. And then it's like, you should definitely ask a person how old they are. I think the attraction that a lot of men have is physical. and But it goes back again to restraint. Now, if this guy from where, from wherever he's from, saw Nia Long, and it's like, we know Nia Long, you know, we see this woman, you know, from whether it was Fresh Prince, Friday, wherever you've seen her from, like I said, she's always been a beautiful woman, but she was a beautiful young lady at the time, so this man probably, I don't know, I don't know exactly how they met, but she said, hey, he did it the right way, he asked my mom, and my mom was fine with it, and it's like, okay, well, I don't know where how her dad felt about it, but I just leave it there. I'm like, all right, well, regardless of whether it was normal or not, regardless of some people might think it's nasty and, and sure, I agree. However, at the same time, it's like there is always the core because, again, the culture and society is different now. We know better now. We know better. We know that, you know, that is wrong. That is statutory rape in in, in sense. Now, pedophilia, I don't get into that because pedophilia is more so of, you know, puberty. You know, if you're, if you're past the age maybe of 13, 14 or whatnot, it's, it's, it's called something else. Still, still probably wrong, but it's, it's different things like, you know, because children are children. There is certain levels of maturity that we get to. 
You know, the human mind isn't fully developed until 25, and then you still have other things that you're learning and unlearning. A lot of times we don't even notice until after we didn't develop that. It's not saying that your mind is going to stop getting, going to stop growing or decrease, but it's like when you, when your mind is fully developed, but you still have to remember you have to reprogram and redevelop and re unlearn and recondition yourself. That's when it's kind of considered a certain thing. That's why I feel a certain way about the smoking age, the legal drinking age, because even adults in their forties make terrible decisions. And it's not even just on the sexuality thing. It's also with just life decisions, you know, prioritizing. So my only thing is, you know, we got to make better judgment because to me, I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't do that. I seen young women in their twenties, 21, 22, who were attractive. We got to remember, keep this in mind, because people talk about Lori Hara and all that. And Lori Hara, she's still in her, I think she's in her early 20s, I think, mid 20s. And then people was even talking about, uh, you know, Kylie Jenner. Like, people love Kylie Jenner. Men love Kylie Jenner. But, like, yeah, she's in her early 20s. And, I mean, the only difference is now is she's older in age. She doesn't look any different. Like, she's, then she still had breath because this is what we have. Like, men, they have, they have a dick, they have chest, they have body hair, they have facial hair, and they develop these things throughout time. Some don't, some do. But it's like, oh, you think this person is young looking and you're attracted to it, then you must be, you know, a rapist or a pedophile. And it's like, nah. But that's the thing. Everybody has different, there's different, there's different type of attractions. But more, more of the story is, you know, I think we have to do our due do diligence when we pick and choose. Because, of course, it is not, you know, right. You know, when we think about, you know, 30 and 17. And regardless of whether, it, regardless of the timeline it was in, you also got to think about the type of culture that other people are in. Everybody don't go, everybody don't go by, don't live by your truth. Some people might agree with me. Some people might not. But it's like I can't do anything with that. The only person that can really condemn me is God. And I have to take accountability for the decisions that I make, the mistakes that I make, and hope and pray that I can be redeemed and forgiven for those mistakes. Because we do have people in our lives that will teach us certain things that we thought was right. Mainly society, mainly television. But then it was wrong the whole time because, again, we have these laws. The laws made things what they are. The laws are necessary. And if you're breaking the law, regardless of how you feel about it, regardless if you agree with it or not, if you're breaking the law, that is wrong. So you have to then make a decision. You have some people who feel as though, all right, I'm going to jaywalk. Petty crime. I'm going to steal something. Petty crime, maybe, depends on what it is. But then there's some other people who might say, nah, it's, it's, it's okay. So, like I said, but again, it's against the law. We all bend the rules and break the rules. I've break the rules and break and bend the rules, especially in my line of work. I've done things maybe I probably shouldn't have done. Whether I knew they was maybe I even whether I knew it was right or not, I have. But I'm I'm dealing with the consequences of that. I have to deal with the consequences of that. But it's all about restraint. I don't think nothing is wrong with thinking. A certain way. It's more about what you do. 
Because if you're thinking a certain way, then you have to kind of like re because you have to reevaluate. You have to kind of get help and get some assistance on correct way of doing things because you don't want your thoughts to become a reality as far as the things that are wrong the things that are against the law i guess you can say but like i say again you know when it comes to a situation like Nia long you know again i don't know what the right way is like you know he he came to his mom so apparently i don't i ain't gonna say apparently but if her mom was okay with it and she was at a certain age because at the same time you gotta remember like 14 year olds are fucking not saying that it's right but it's like at what point at what when is it okay to date is it only is dating only for adults because at the same time you gotta remember this the age the age the age law can change. The age law can be different. Some states it might be okay to buy, you know, cigarettes and stuff. Some some places like twenty one is the age that you can drink. But again, people still drink at a younger age. So it's like how do the mind kind of process? You know, so that's just something to think about. And, um, you know, today is Valentine's Day. And by the time y'all listen to this, it'll probably be already past Valentine's Day. I want to, I do want to, um, shift topics for a second. Like, I think I asked this before. Like I said, things can be repetitive sometimes in a cliche. But like I said, it's all about re-educating, relearning, and reconditioning. So sometimes you have to continue to do things and say things for things to kind of click and to change. So like, what is a, what is a good date? What are some good gifts? Like, and why are people just so offensive about it? Like I've seen this post. Somebody was talking about, you know, Valentine's Day it don't matter. Like, what is that? I'm like, I'm sitting here like, you know, people sometimes can be so woke that, you know, they can put, they can talk themselves into hell. They put this, they, they put themselves through so much because it's like we have these holidays that are celebrated and acknowledged, and people make it just like Thanksgiving and Easter and Christmas. Valentine's Day, all that stuff, like, people don't want to, like, people who don't acknowledge it or say don't recognize it because, oh, this is, you know, a pagan holiday, and it's like, okay, so Thanksgiving is a celebration of, you know, when America killed the Indians and all this stuff, and it's like, but you, look what you're, look what you're doing. You, you people, like I said, picking and choosing. Like, if you're going to pick and choose and going to crucify people for taking the time to celebrate or do things on holidays that they can get off work or even acknowledge their loved ones, or even though you should take it every day, then then your birthday shouldn't matter. Neither. Your birthday shouldn't matter. None of like not, like weddings, none of that stuff, because here's the thing. Nothing deserves more praise than God. Nothing or no one. Because I'm going to tell you one thing. God allows certain things. And though we are human, we do have to take accountability of what we know and how we pursue and do things. We still have to remember that life should not affect your life so much to where you're sitting here condemning someone else. Like I said, right is right, wrong is wrong. Correction and judgment are two different things. I don't think anyone needs to be corrected for celebrating Christmas, Thanksgiving, Valentine's Day. 
because people know the history. People know what it's about. A lot of people make it about Jesus. A lot of people make it about gifts. But at the same time, the information is there. Because, like, because, and let's say that, like, let's say not everybody knows the origin of Valentine's Day or Easter and all that, right? And you tell them. That's not, because again, you have to, you have to, have to condition yourself to forget about it. Just imagine if God came down because this, since this is about, you know, energy, if God told you, you know, hey, treat every day like it's your birthday. Because every day is a new. Is that a problem? Wouldn't that be a problem? Because again, your birthday is selfish and self-centered. There's nothing humbling about celebrating your birthday. If you're celebrating it, shouldn't we be humble at all times? So if people want to use Valentine's Day as a day of loving their partner or maybe even having a date, let them do it. I think if you're in a relationship, Valentine's Day isn't isn't that important. But if you're talking to someone or if you just kind of like want to go out with someone, say, let's go on Valentine's Day, you know, because, again, there's there's certain we get certain things. There is certain there's an advertisement and a good promotion for Valentine's Day. You might see might be able to get more candy. You might be able to see more bears because, again, sometimes it's a marketing thing. Valentine's Day is marketing. Easter is marketing. Christmas and Thanksgiving, marketing. Black Friday is marketing. Because trust and believe me, you're going to be going out there trying to get those sales. So is that still considered celebration? But, um, you know, I just want to, you know, I wanted to touch base on that. Because I have expressed this enough times. To where if you're a faithful listener, you know me that I'm I'm really trying, I'm working on me, but I cannot stress this enough is that do not misjudge people for what they do without educating yourself. Sometimes I can go back and end up contradicting myself because of my ignorance. But when I, when I learn or discover something that might have been missed, I take accountability for that. And whether I do it publicly or privately, I can sleep at night. See, what I do can affect people around me, what I say can affect people around me. And I have, and I have to have retribution. I have to get redemption. But again, my relationship with God is most important and the most valuable. So as long as I know that God has forgiven me and redeemed me, I know that everything else is going to be fine because I am human. And that course, that's a cliche as well. You know, there, there's another thing that I wanted to address. The Super Bowl needs to go ahead and be a holiday. Because it's because, again, baseball is still an American sport, but it's almost like people take off, like people will be off work, like nobody's shopping when the Super Bowl is on. Even if you don't watch sports like that, like me, the Super Bowl is, it's a holiday. It's one of those unwritten holidays. Like, here's the thing, like, I think it's like people just want to have control. But when I say certain things, like, because the, because 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 the Super Bowl isn't a holiday, technically it's celebrated more. People will take off work. Some people will make bets. People will oh, they will go to the cookouts and have dinner because it's a Super Bowl. 
that's still praising a day, right? It's not a, it's not, they say Super Bowl Sunday is because it's on every Sunday. It's just like how, it's just like on Easter. Easter is on a Sunday. You know, R- WrestleMania is on a Sunday. Maybe it's on a Saturday and Sunday now, but it's like there are certain things that are just strictly for Sundays. Just like Thanksgiving is usually on Thursdays, but it's, um, and it's probably because, you know, even with Black Friday, I think it's a certain thing, um, Cyber Monday. But, uh, the reason why I say that is because, you know, things, things, you know, things can, there's a day, I think there's a day in every month that has a holiday and maybe more than one. And then it's like, I think there should be at least one day out of the, out of each month, every year where we celebrate it. Because again, we have New Year's in January, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, which isn't a day that people, like some people get taken on. Then on February, again, we got Valentine's Day. Um, March is St. Patrick's Day. Um, April, I think, is Easter. June, I'm not 100% sure what June is, but July is Independence Day. No, June is Juneteenth, of course. Juneteenth, that's a holiday now. So shout out to the government for that. So we have Juneteenth now, federal holiday. Um, I don't get paid for it. Fuck AutoZone. But, uh, 4th of July, August, um, I guess you can say back to school. I'm not sure. Um, September, you have, I don't know what's in September. Somebody help me here. October, Halloween. November Thanksgiving, Black Friday, and of course Christmas and December. So maybe what, like two, 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 uh, two months out of the 12, there's a holiday that's being celebrated. Whether it's religious or not, it's like there's, there's going to be a day you might be off. Like some people are not going to be off work for Halloween, but you know, it's a holiday for children. You know, they get the trick or treat and do certain things like that. And I talked about that, but, um, people was, um, talking about Rihanna being pregnant, right? And again, that was another thing. People kind of, some people was happy. Some people was like, man, how did she get pregnant already? She just had a baby. And I'm like, look, y'all let social media dictate everything for y'all. Because whether the she had her baby in May, whether she had her baby in March, whether she had her baby in the summertime, it's like, do we really know? Do we really know? How far along she is. Because I'm going to tell you this. I know women who have babies and you would never know. Like they might have a small little pill. You would probably think they're only three months. But there are some people who are that skinny. And just like there are some women who will be pregnant and you won't know because they're so big. But it's like people people kind of say, you know, hey, it ain't been six weeks. I'm like, May is a long time. It was a long time ago. I don't know exactly when that child was born. But it's still like, you know, it's February now, and y'all seeing her belly. Some people were saying that, oh, she really wasn't pregnant. You know how long it takes for them to get rid of that baby fat. But it's like, shoot, we seen her, we seen her pregnant right then. And like, it's just, everybody just has something to say about it. And that's fine. That's congratulations to Rihanna and ASAP Rocky, who, uh, who is a, Beautiful couple, if you ask me, you know, you can say, you know, two fashion icons in some sense in their own right. You know, I'm still waiting for that Kanye, um, that Yeezy and Fenty collab. It's coming. It's coming. You know, y'all have y'all Fenty underwears with holes in it called the Holy Draws. Holy wear by Fenty and Yeezy. But, you know, it is what it is. But I, um... You know, I want to congratulate Rihanna and ASAP. Like I said, I didn't really watch the Super Bowl, but I did uh, catch some things. Um, but it was just something that I that I wanted to ask. You know, because again, I'm not a doctor. You know, I've been 
you know, I've been married, you know, I've been with pregnant women, dated them, you know, did like people, some people say, you know, hey, you can't have sex after six weeks. Wait six weeks before you have sex again. So let's say the baby was born in May, right? So that's May. So then you have maybe the whole, let's say it's, let's say June. Let's say June, July. So let's say they conceived in August, September, October, November, December, January, February. That's six months right there. There are some women who will be showing at four months. And like I said, there'll be some women who won't be showing at all. So regardless of when she had the baby, again, like Rihanna, like, come on, let's be real. Let's be real. Like, is ASAP Rocky wrong? Is Rihanna wrong for already getting pregnant again? Like we, like we, I, I can joke. I got jokes for days, but at the same time, yo, like, you know, she's pregnant. Says some sources. If it's official, congratulations. If not, it's like, oh well. But I just want to say this to those of y'all listening. Again, I appreciate y'all. You know, you have to remember that people in positions, and since I'm talking about Rihanna, she's in a position where she can do what a lot of other women can't do. ASAP Rocky. He can do a lot of things other guys can't do. But you got to remember, you got to let's be real because here's the thing. Rihanna is a beautiful woman. She has sex appeal. So I don't blame ASAP. So my condolences to the people who's mad. To people who have the problem because hey, you know, she's still a young, beautiful woman. You know, we don't like I said, those of you who don't know a person, like it's like we don't know what's going on behind closed doors. Like I said, they probably could have been counting down. They might live together. They they you don't know their relationship. You only know what you see on social media. So you gotta you gotta keep that in mind. But yeah, it's it's one of those things like six weeks. I keep saying baby was saying the baby was born in May. Like that, you know, that's a, the baby might be due again in May. The baby might come again in May because there's, because me, um, because I know, I know, I know people who has siblings that's born in the same year. Might not have been conceived in the same year, you know, but maybe, maybe not. But the thing is, Everything seems impossible until it's not. We want to listen to the doctors and say, hey, wait six weeks. Maybe they didn't. Maybe some people heal faster than others. But these things are put in place for a reason. But it's also going to be those people that challenges it. Because everybody everybody is there, but you don't want to use that excuse all the time. But at the end of the day, I just want to give some insight. And some encouragement is that, you know, you can be your own idol or icon, I should say. You know, don't be so self-serving. Be self-sufficient. You know, don't mind your business. Just do your due diligence. You know, that's my, that's my two cent. You know, shout out to my ex. You know, I had three heart attacks this year. You know, thinking, you know, hey, I had something. But shout out to all the women who left me, who didn't work out with me, who ghosted me, dissed me, broke my heart. You know, I hope you're out there happy somewhere. 
no love lost. Prayers always up. And the rest of y'all, you know, y'all stay safe. Stay prosperous, productive, and most importantly, positive. Y'all know the deal. I'm out.